Speed is proud to welcome you to Sonoma, California. It's time for NASCAR Nextel Cup qualifying for Sunday's running of the Toyota Save Mart 350. It's been a very busy day here at the track. Early this morning, breaking news from the garage. Four-time series champion Jeff Gordon and his teammate, the reigning series champ, Jimmy Johnson, parked by NASCAR today when their cars failed pre-testing, pre-practice inspection. They were not allowed on the track at all today. We're not allowed to practice. We'll not make a qualifying attempt. They will start 41st and 42nd on Sunday. Tomorrow, NASCAR will discuss exactly how those cars are able to participate in Saturday's scheduled practice sessions here at Sonoma. For more on this story, let's go down to the garage, and here's Matt Yoakum. Well, Bill, four-time champion Jeff Gordon summed it up best. He said, I'm on cloud nine because I just had a baby, but everyone else within our organization are really racking their brains or what's taking place today, which just has been a nightmare. Now, the issue in question is in the fender area on the front around the Goodyear tire label. Now, they actually had to cut those sections out and re-weld in new sections. The big question mark tomorrow, A, is when they're going to be allowed on the racetrack. You mentioned they're going to be starting 41st and 42nd, but the bigger question is really the penalty. As far as not being on the track today with this new car, the car tomorrow here at Infineon Raceway. But the bigger question we saw with Tony Urie Jr. when they uh, had some areas manipulating the brackets in the rear wing area, Tony Jr. was suspended for six races. Now, the big question is, does NASCAR feel this is going to be a trend that you're going to see where they're going to park the crew chiefs of the 24 and 48 for that type of period? That's the bigger issue that everyone's waiting to see. But will the cars hit the track tomorrow? What time? And really, how big is this story going to continue to grow? Bill? Thanks, Matt. Hi, everybody. Bill Weber along with Wally Donnaback. Our partner, Kyle Petty, is working his day job this weekend. Why? Because he loves to race here at Infineon. Let's first of all talk about the Hendrick situation. Uh, there are several schools of thought on this. One is you want to push the envelope. The second one is you don't want to mess with the car tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, NASCAR made it very clear not to mess with the car tomorrow. So I'm, I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, I understand pushing the envelope, but, I, you know, from what I understand, it was pretty obvious when the car showed up, they didn't even need to put the templates on it, that the bubble were on the fender so that's you know it's pretty interesting uh it's going to be tough not having practice i mean these guys are very good they'll they'll wind up in the front before this race is over but they've got the work cut out for them and they've put themselves in a position where they can get in trouble by other race cars coming through traffic so that's the thing these guys have to really be worried about and, and i know you love these road courses and you want to get as much track time as possible no matter who you are especially at a place like this which is so it's fun to drive obviously but challenging it, it really is a challenge i mean there's uh looking at the practice sheet there's eight cars that have to qualify on time that are below 36. And, I mean, this is a long place to come to not make the race. I mean, the teams and the drivers have worked hard to get here, and if you don't make the race, there's a long way home. I mean, I talked to Boris said a little bit in the garage here, and, I mean, he looks like he's going to throw up. I mean, you can see the stress, and, and these guys are feeling it right now. It's the toughest one lap you make in racing is to tr try to qualify when you have to get in on time. And there's 50-some cars here. A lot of stress, a lot of excitement, a lot of fun coming up from Sonoma. Qualify for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series is next. You're watching Speed. Just about set to go qualifying here at Sonoma. And there's David Stremme, the first of 52 cars that are here. Of course, only 50 will make a run. And Stremme heads out on the track. Car tomorrow race. You can tell that simply by looking at the cars. And this will be a very interesting experience throughout the weekend for these drivers and their crews. Stremme through the final turn, then comes along the pit straight. And will cross the start-finish line. I think these, it should be interesting how the drivers think these cars aren't road course. I mean, they, they really, I think they fit a road course fairly well. Um, see David trying to get through turn one here. I'll tell you, you don't have much time to heat the tires up either. Right. It looks like he is having trouble right there. Doesn't look like he got the car into gear as quick as he wanted to. Not having very good practice. He was 39th on the sheets.
me a little bit about this track and and what's going to because first of all in qualifying Ooh, lock the right yeah. front up hard there every that car i'm sorry but the car just does not sound like it's accelerating he, he gets off the corner and you can listen to it it just it just feels like it's just not lighting up off the corners like it should it, it, this is a rhythm racetrack i mean this is you know one of those racetracks you can you can run really hard at oh boy he missed the line there too he's struggling a little bit right now with this car Tremmy, the first qualifier. I mean, that, there's something that, wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, there's something wrong with that thing. It's just not running properly. And I could see that right when he got through turn one on his first lap. The thing just would not go. Anyways, you know, it's a racetrack. You can run real aggressive. Um, you know, it's smooth. There's a lot of room. It's rhythm. You know, you really try to keep your momentum around this place. It's really important to break, though. You, you're, you've got to get in the corners deep here to make a good lap. That's where I think you make a lot of time up on a road course with the drivers that can drive the car in really, really deep, get the car slowed down without locking up a left front tire, right front tire, or wheel hopping, and getting right back after the throttle. He was five seconds slower than yeah, the slowest car in practice. Yeah, no, he had he had some serious issues there. That was pretty obvious. Like, like I said, I turn one, I saw a big puff of black smoke come out, and he just wouldn't go. You see the 17 drivers that have to get in on their time, and Terry Labonte and Bill Elliott, both eligible for the past champions provisional. 17 drivers of the 52. Brandon Ash, our second qualifier. Brandon Ash is going to really have to pick his time up from, from practice. Uh, Brandon was like 45th fastest in practice, and uh, that didn't look pretty right there. It looked like uh, kind of misses, missed the mark there in turn one. Ooh, didn't look good there either. That's going to be hard to recover from. He's made two mistakes right there already on the first two corners, and that's going to be pretty hard to recover from. He has made two races here in 2004 and 2006, finished 38th last year. Working with his dad, Ed, as his crew chief. But struggling here on his qualifying lap, and you only get one lap. Brandon, one of the guys that has to get in on time. He'll be followed by Kurt Busch, then Boris Said, Regan Smith, Carl Edwards, Brian Vickers, and Terry Labonte. First few drivers scheduled to qualify here at Infineon Raceway. Oh, wheel hop there. He's not going to be very happy with this lap. Trying to get back in the gas there. And he takes the checkered flag. Seventy nine point one eight for Brandon Ash, but that uh, probably won't be enough to get him in the show on Sunday. Matt. Bill, the fastest man so far today, Bobby Labonte, with this car requiring braking so much more versus the old car. Do you think we're going to see the braking zones open up and maybe create a little more chaos? Yeah, it, it could. It could very well. It just doesn't seem like we can get in the corner as hard as we were the old car and uh, to me anyway. And uh, so, yeah, it could open it up for more chaotic moves or well, I don't know if it'll be better or not but uh, you know he definitely could open up those areas that were tight because everybody seemed like they could go in really hard before and not have a problem or if your problem it was minimal you can make up for it but now with these cars and really high center gravity it feels like you're just lifting that that inside tire up and uh, you know it could lead for more problems in one way and then more passing in another way so it could be better good luck Bob yeah thank you here's Kurt Busch had an excellent practice session this morning, third fastest, and has a new crew chief this weekend. Pat Trison moves over after leaving the Roush organization. Pat basically did a meet and greet with the guys at the shop on Tuesday, spent Wednesday at the shop, and is here and he said, uh, in the garage this morning not taking any credit for anything that Kurt's doing so far today because he's really kind of just observing. Pat said that? Yes. 
And that's what Pat will always say. <laughs> I mean, Pat is, uh, he's a really good guy, very smart with these race cars. I, I got the opportunity to work with him one time, and um, I don't think he'll ever take credit for anything. <laughs> we have been joined by Mr. Speed himself, <laughs> Larry McReynolds. Wally, you can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> I'm right here with you, buddy. Uh, I was going to call you Mr. Something Else, but I think <laughs> I'll save that for later. You He's know, I couldn't help but hear what Bobby Labonte was saying. And Elliot Sadler, a few weeks ago, I think he put it in perspective, the difference in feel from the car tomorrow to the current car. He said going from the current car to the car tomorrow, as far as the way it feels, is almost like getting out of your Corvette and getting in your SUV. It just feels top heavy when you try to go around the corner with it. And you can see that. <laughs> you can see when they go through the corners, it's, it's really making the inside tires light. Kurt won the butt pole for both road course races last year. Has a top 10 starting position in each of the last 10 road course races. And right now is on the provisional pole. 78.08. You got a ballpark figure there, uh, Chief? I'd say that's going to be a pretty good benchmark right there, but I believe somebody will definitely get down in the uh, minute 17 bracket if you're going to sit on the bud pole here today. But I'd say that'll be a pretty good starting spot for Kurt. Just three top 10 finishes in 2007 for Kurt. Now look at this list. Some guys that... Uh, like to think they excel and do on road courses. PJ, Tibor is set on that list. Ron Fellows is here. Bill Wally, what's interesting about that list right there, every one of those drivers are in cars that have to qualify on time with the exception of Ron Fellows. And I think Bill Saunders and the group at Hall of Fame Racing felt like that that car is flirting so much with falling outside the top 35 and owner points. Good racetrack to bring and put Ron Fellows in it. Well, here's Boris, and he had a few adventures in practice earlier today. Well, yeah, you're, you'll get everything you can out of Boris <laughs> on, on his qualifying lap. And what I was talking about earlier about the guy that gets into the corners that knows how to break a car on a road course is Boris said. Um, he's, he's one of the best at it, I think, as far as driving a car in deep, getting a car slowed down, getting it in gear, getting it, you know, to go again. That's where he makes up a lot of time on his road courses. He won the truck race here back in 1998. Looking to make his 28th next Tell Cup race. A little trouble there at the end of the shoot. But Larry, uh, we've seen just about everybody do that over there so far. I think that tire is so light when they're turning that thing in and the brake, and we're gonna see a lot of that today. But he's definitely making ground up through the S's. He went from being second quickest to the pole. If he can get through turn 10, and especially through that slow corner of turn 11, we may have a pole contender here. Well, here's the key right here. If he can get the car slowed down, not lock it up. And that looked pretty right there. Late apex entry. Yep. Nice and straight off the corner. Won the pole at Daytona last July, trying to make a pole winning run here at Sonoma. Good lap. I'll say. Provisional poll to Boris said. So now everybody hunting down Boris as Nextel Cup qualifying continues in California. <laughs> qualifying continues for the NASCAR Nextel Cup series here in California. The 0-1 car, Regan Smith on the track. That's Smith, not Mark Martin here in Sonoma. Mark has had tremendous success at this track in the past. But Regan Smith has his hands full. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be a very good lap for Regan. Was 42nd in practice. Qualified 8th for Mexico City. The Bush race back in March. Finished 26th. And this team is determined to muddy the waters <laughs> when we head into the chase by being one of the top 12 in owner points, which will really confuse things. It'll be the top 12 owners and the top 12 drivers for the last 10 races. Man, oh, man. Ralph Shaheen. 
All right, we're down here with Kurt Busch. He just got done with his qualifying run. How'd it go out there? What'd you think? I thought it was okay, but then to look at the time, it's a bit slow. Uh, we lost quite a bit of speed from practice and uh, just loose getting into the rights and loose out of the rights, but wherever we start, we'll take it. What's the biggest challenge as far as getting one of these car tomorrow cars ready for a road course? Uh, it's just a matter of ignoring some of the, the quirks of the car versus fixing some of the others. It's a balance of, hey, do you ignore this because it's a big time problem or is it because it's just part of the car's heritage? All right, Kurt, thanks a lot. Carl Edwards, fresh from a win at Michigan. Best starting spot here, 20th a year ago. Three road course starts in his career. He was actually pretty good in practice, wasn't he, earlier, Wally? Yep, he was in the top 10, seventh quick. The hard thing about this deal here qualifying, you know, like on this place for one lap, if you mess up one corner, it, it really shows up on the, on the watch. And it's important getting to the green, too. You don't want to mess up getting to the green on that last corner. Yeah, unlike everywhere else we go at the two road courses, it's one lap shot. You don't get that second shot, that second lap. And on these road courses, and every little mistake is just magnified because you're trying to hustle the car around the track. Yeah. You, you, you feel, as a driver, you feel it, and you know it feels like when you make a mistake or you lock up a tire or, or something, it feels like you've just left a second out on the racetrack. I mean, that's how it feels to a driver, on, uh, especially on one of these road courses. But this lap looks pretty good so far. A little, I'll tell you, the car's loose, but it's it's fast loose. He got through. Whoa, look at that! Carrying that left front. Tire. Talk about carrying it. There's two feet of air underneath that thing. You see right there that little wiggle. That cost him you know, a tenth of a second right there. You know, Wally, it's not unusual to see a car here at, in Finneon carry one of the front tires, but that's something we've almost been seeing with these car tomorrows, especially at the flat short tracks all year long. Yeah, I mean, well, normally you see the, the tires being lifted after they hit a curb, but I, I don't think I've ever seen one come off the ground that far in that corner. Third for Carl Edwards, behind Boris Sad and Kurt Busch. Now watch this. Wow. I mean, that, that's sprint car <laughs> high, man. <laughs> Having fun. That's Didn't Sonoma. Didn't slow Cousin Carl down. No, sir. NASCAR Next Tall Cup qualifying continues from Sonoma, California, with Brian Vickers on the track, the seventh driver of 52 to make his qualifying attempt. Again, if you're just joining us, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson parked for the day by NASCAR when their cars failed inspection this morning before practice you know Wally I'm anxious to see how the Toyotas qualify here we only had one in the top 20 in practice one of the things the Toyotas fought early in the season is not a lot of torque a lot of bottom in in these engines right. and that's that's what you have to have Everything here and a lot here. of it and and boy that's don't think that's gonna be good enough for Brian Ralph well, I'm down here with a couple of guys that just got done with their qualifying laps, Boris said, and Carl Edwards, and yours went well, and you're not happy with yours. Let's start here. How good was it, and how tough is it? It's tough because with the rubber from the Winston West cars, it's a little slippery, and, you know, so the track's going to get faster, but, you know, for me, with no points, just to get our Sobe No Fear Railings, Dollar General, Aussie Vineyards car, that's a mouthful, I know, but we're selling sponsors finally. Uh, it's a great feeling because I think that lap will get us in the show. Final question, is it easy to overdrive this car? Yeah, way easier. You know, the old car you could be a lot more aggressive with. In this car, you know, you got to, if you're a little too aggressive, it just slides off the racetrack. So it's a fine line between uh, great and disaster. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Now, what happened to you, Carl? What went wrong? I guess I didn't hear Boris's interview before I went. I heard it afterwards. <laughs> it would have helped me. Um, I just was a little too aggressive. That rubber was, was noticeably different from practice. And uh, I think guys are going to pick up a ton. Our office depot fusion is really, really fast, so in race trim, and we'll see what happens. Well, the Michigan winner a little frustrated right now. Thanks for sticking around, Carl. Let's go right to Matt. Ralph, back in 2003, Robbie Gordon swept both road course races, and really a little bit of luck. He probably could have won a half a dozen more. Your fun meter must be pegged every time you come to either Watkins Glen or here at Infineon. Uh, this, this racetrack here, especially at Finneon, um, you know, I only have one victory. Um, we've been in a position to probably win about seven or eight of these things, and we've either made bad pit calls or, or I put myself in a position to, uh, to get the toe knocked out of the thing like we did last year or something. So, um, you know, I think this year we um, tried to learn from as many mistakes we've made in the past and do everything, everything we can to put the monster energy forward in victory lane. 
and he looked really strong in practice. He was second quick, Bill. Thanks, Matt. Terry Labonte in the seat for Michael Waltrip, trying to make his 849th next Hell Cup Series start. Only three other drivers have 800 or more, Richard Petty, Ricky Rudd, and Dave Marcus. Two-time road course winner in the next Hell Cup Series. Now, Michael will be back in the car at Loudon, New Hampshire next week. This is pretty much a two-race program they're doing with Terry, uh, who would be eligible for the past championship divisional. They're, he's going to race here and at Watkins Glen in about a month and a half. Checkered flag for Terry. Eighth car to go. Falls into the fourth spot. So Terry Labonte, fourth. Everybody chasing Borsed, the provisional pole sitter at Sonoma. Ward Burton really hustled his car around this road course in Sonoma, California. Finished sixth here back in 2001. And this lap looks pretty good. I'll tell you what, he's getting everything out of it. He can, no question. He's driving the wheels off this car. Oh! Has to get in on his qualifying time. You know, he got loose over there in turn 10, Wally, but actually picked a spot up. He, he needs to get into the top five just looking right now basically where Brandon Ash and Brian Vickers are qualified being one of the go or go home guys. I don't think he got through that last corner like he wanted to. Checkered flag for Ward Burton. The ninth driver to make his run falls into the sixth spot. Wally, there's such a fine line at this place between underdriving and overdriving the race car. It's like walking on a razor blade, isn't it? It really is, especially for this one lap, for this qualifying. I mean, you know, that's the one thing is you're trying to get everything out of the car, and you know you've got to get in the corners as hard as you can. And like you heard Bobby Labonte talk about, these cars are a little bit different under braking with the weight side to side. They're different from the cars that used to be uh, used to run here. But, man, I'll tell you what, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a great race. I believe you're right. I Ralph? just think it evens it up a lot. Sorry, Wally. Ralph? Bill, we were checking on the story with David Strimmey as to what went wrong with the 40 car. As you noted, uh, the qualifying pace very slow. Apparently, the car was stuck in gear. Not sure exactly which gear it was. We didn't get that information from them. Stuck in gear, not able to, to shift the way he needed to to get around this track. Thanks, Ralph. Appreciate you following up with that. I mean, you shift about 14 to 16 times a lap here at this racetrack. A lot of it stuck. He spent a lot of time in second gear. It, it was almost like he couldn't get it in second gear because the way he was getting off the corners, the car was really slow to accelerate. So I'm just wondering if he if he couldn't get to second. Bobby Labonte making his qualifying run here. Best finish in a car of tomorrow, eighth at Phoenix. Won the butt pole at Watkins Glen back in 2000. And he was the fastest car in practice earlier with this 43 car, and he's looking pretty good right now. Heads down to shoot here. Right here, a lot of the guys will go all the way down to first gear here in this very slow corner. You can see him sliding that right front tire, too. Pretty it pumped. pumped. Didn't cost so much. Pretty pumped if you have a, you know, the fastest guy in practice, aren't you, when you're coming out to make this? qualifying lap here oh, oh yeah yeah you are but you're you're thinking about man i hope i can match it i hope i can do what i did in practice and not make any mistakes on that lap see how he does down here and this is such a hard corner i mean it it's so slow yet it's so hard to get around this corner and get the throttle down you know it, it's frustrating because it's so slow Made up a little bit of ground off turn 11. I'm not sure it's going to be as fast as Board said. But Bobby will be pretty pleased with it. Second so far for the 43 and Bobby Labonte. Still to come, Martin Truex Jr. And many more at Sonoma. 11th driver to make his qualifying attempt, Reed Sorensen on the track at Infineon Raceway in Sonoma, California. 52 drivers scheduled to qualify. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson will not get that opportunity, parked earlier today by NASCAR, when their car has failed inspection. And they have said that they will meet with them in the morning and let them know the status of their participation tomorrow in those two practice sessions. Okay, Mr. Crew Chief, what were they doing to those cars? Well, the real challenge of 
the car tomorrow is getting the thing to turn. And that's always a challenge here at Infineon. The cars are down on front downforce. And we've always had the liberties with our old current car to pretty much do for the most part what we wanted to do with the front fenders. You look at a front fender from Talladega, very different from a front fender who? Here, one of the agendas with the car tomorrow is every front fender besides being left and right, the same for every racetrack. And that's a lot of things that that grid of template controls. What they did, they worked in between the grids. NASCAR could see it was pretty obviously they were trying to build more front down force. And I, they, they've been warning these guys since the winter, we're not gonna mess with the bodies on these cars, boys. And the point Matt Yoakum brought up earlier is Tony Urey Jr. on the bench after he ran into problems with the car tomorrow. You have to wonder what next week might bring for some members of the Hendrick team. One of the goals of the car tomorrow, obviously safety being the first and foremost, is the fact that the teams will not have to have as many cars to run the circuit. There are a lot of cars here, Bill and Wally, that these teams ran at Bristol, at Phoenix, at Martinsville. If you open that door and let them start working between the templates, you pretty much throw that out the window. They're gonna be right back to having cars for all the different types of tracks. All right, here comes an exciting lap. Robbie Gordon on the track. We watch him and check with Ralph. We're down here with Bobby Labonte, who's second quick right now. And Bobby, one of the key terms that we're hearing a lot right now is go slow to go fast. Would you agree with that theory? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I think I, I tried that a little bit in practice, and that wasn't the right thing to do. So, um, you know, we had a pretty good lap there in our uh, uh, Cheerios Better Cracker Dodge. And, you know, we uh, lost a little bit from our, our quicker lap, you know, but the track sometimes slowed down some. But um, just, didn't, just didn't get the good lap uh, that we wanted. But you're right. I mean, definitely go slow to go faster is definitely better, it seems like, today. Bill. Thanks, Ralph. Robbie Gordon has just taken the green flag. Robbie doesn't believe in that philosophy, <laughs> just to point this in out. In anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nine top 10 finishes in his 17 cup road course races, and the two wins back in 2003. You know, ever since Gene Need started over there as crew chief about a month ago, I mean, you look at the last three races, Michigan, Pocono, and Dover, he's had three top, two top 15 finishes, starting to really to come around with a seven car as a single car team. And as we were talking about earlier when they talked to Robbie, he really, wow. You know he gets excited when they come here in the Glen. Better believe it. And you know, we were talking during a practice session, if Robbie Gordon could win a oh. next Del Cup, he is getting everything yeah. that is there. Wow. Tell you, the front of his car looks good though. The shocks or whatever, it's real tidy looking. Nice and flat. Yeah. He eased it into turn 11, Wally, but he made that ground back up and then some, which is where you beat people from the center off. Right. Trying to knock Boris Set off the provisional pole. And he does. A seven one hundredths of a second. <laughs> <laughs> he even makes it exciting after qualifying. <laughs> That's going to be one happy driver. Robbie Gordon on the provisional pole here at Sonoma. Just 12 cars have gone of the 52 scheduled. Robbie with the wild ride. Hey, race fans. You grab the bud, I'll grab the trophy. Speed is at Infineon Raceway in Sonoma, California. NASCAR next tell cup qualifying. Sixth quick for Kyle Busch. Falls in behind Carl Edwards right in front of Terry Labonte. Robbie Gordon has the provisional pole and Ralph has Robbie. 77.533 provisional pole. Now, Wally Dahlenbach took notice of the fact that it looked like the front end of your car was really nice and tidy. You've been working hard on that today? We worked hard on our car for the, the whole time. Uh, we, had, we had a very good test. And, um, you know, I'm going to say I left half a second out there on the table. That's, that's, that's disappointing because I locked up the left front uh, coming through turn 10. And um, just it really, really upset the car and lost a lot of speed through there. But, um, Excited to be running the monster car this weekend. Um, just going to try to do everything we can to make sure we put ourselves in position to win the race. Uh, qualifying is important, but we came here to win the race. And still a consummate showman spinning the car around, coming back down pit lane, giving a little bit back to the fans, huh? Nah, it's not only that. Um, the brake ducts are pretty tight when we turn. I can't turn a hairpin like that 180, so um, just pitched around backwards. 
<laughs> Little James James Garner there to get the thing spun around head down pit lane, Bill. Hey, thanks, Ralph. Have... First, it? it it has. Yes. Okay. Maybe he thought the next car was coming quickly or something. <laughs> So he's not as happy as I thought he would be. Still on the provisional pole. Here's Martin Truex Jr. One with this car of tomorrow at Dover. One on the road course in Mexico City back in 2005. I think he caught everyone by surprise down there, especially with a lot of the road race specialists down there, the inaugural race. And uh, he didn't just win the race. He pretty much spanked everybody all day long. And watching that race, you kept waiting for something to happen because you didn't expect him to be out there like that. But he did a great job. And he's red hot right now, too. Second at Michigan, third at Pocono, the win at Dover. 16th or better in his last five, third or better in his last three. Yeah, and in those three races, Bill went from 20th to 10th in the next Dell Cup points. So that was a big hit for him. Trying to climb inside the top 10 here. Make up a little bit of ground getting through to turn 10 and down here into turn 11. 38th in practice. Got off 11 pretty good. That's turn 11, but there are only seven turns. Is that? That's another show, Bill. It is. <laughs> another whole show. <laughs> Sixth for Martin Truex Jr., Robbie Gordon on the provisional pole. Kevin Harvick and Tony Stewart coming up. A.J. Allmendinger has his hands full. He was 46th of the 50 cars that practiced. Has to get in on his time. This is ugly. He's hanging out at the bottom right now. And the more he tries to make up ground, the more he loses. Well said. Boy, his tires were squealing a lot now. All the way around too. the racetrack. 14th of the 15 cars that have run. So AJ Allmendinger in a world of hurt right now. Looks like possibly both the Red Bull cars, Vickers and Allmendinger, could be in trouble. Vickers 13th, Allmendinger 14th, only 15 cars. He ain't gonna believe it. Have He's run. scratching his head going, How, I drove that hard. And we're 14th out of 15 cars? Frustrating. I don't even want to talk about it, Ricky. <laughs> I think that like pretty I much said. sums it up. <laughs> Frustrated. Yeah. And then you think, wow, and Robbie was two seconds faster than that? How does he do it? It's tough. Very tough. Sauter in the 70 car. Sauter actually had a pretty good practice. I mean, he was 24th. You know, Johnny had never seen this racetrack before. He came out here and did a, a late model school a couple of weeks ago with Chris Cook, so this will be his first start ever. But guys, this is a race team. They just need a solid finish because they keep flirting with that danger zone. Right now, they're 35th in oh, all the points. Johnny blew that corner. Boy, he was, he was looking good, too. He was up in the top two or three there and just missed that turn one. Saw the tracker take the nosedive on the exit of turn one. <laughs> and that now that's going to be hard to make up. It's going to, you know, that's what I'm saying. If you make one mistake here, it's really hard to recover. You can see down near the bottom of the cars that have run so far. He's the 16th car on the track here in qualifying. Yeah, I mean, he lost a good second over there. You can see how much you have to play with that throttle up through the S's right here. And once you miss it, you got to try and get your whole rhythm back, right? Yeah, and, and this would have, I mean, if he would have hit that turn two right, this would have been a really good lap for him. Through yep. turn 11, sorry. He continues to make up a little bit of ground as he goes around the road course, around the whole course, but yeah, that turn at the top of the hill killed him. Checkered flag for Johnny Sauter, the 16th driver to go out, falls into the 11th spot. Casey Kane, Jamie McMurray, Ricky Rudd, still the rock. 
Former Trans Am Series champion, Brian Simo, making his qualifying attempt here at Sonoma. He's got to go, though. He's one of the go-or-go-home guys. To get in on his time, Robbie Gordon, the provisional pole sitter. Checkered flag for Brian. 17th car to make an attempt. 16th on the chart. Only David Stremme, who had who struggled on the first lap in qualifying, is slower. Matt, who are you hanging out with? Well, his teammate is currently third fastest here at Infineon Raceway. I've caught up with Kyle Petty. You are going to be a busy camper on Sunday. In more than one way. <laughs> in more than one way. Hopefully, I can get it in the right gear. Uh, and I'm talking about my mouth now and my, my brain. I'm not talking about my race car. And, and I just want to say to Wally and, and Weber, Nice shirts up there in the booth, man. You guys look really good. Uh, but, you know, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to be different. We talked to NASCAR, sat down with the guys from, from TNT. Uh, we're going to do a lot more under caution and hopefully be talking to Wally a lot more. And uh, I'm going to use him as a coach this week. So uh, hopefully he'll give me some instruction. And your teammate, Bobby Labonte, laid down a pretty good lap. Can you match that? Uh, I'm not sure we can match that. Bobby was really good in practice. Um, and the Chariots dodging. You know, when... He was, he was probably a half, maybe three-quarters of a second faster. He lost a little bit, but I think the track slowed down a little bit, and um, we didn't want to see any excitement out of him like you see out of Robbie Gordon when he goes to qualify. Robbie had a great lap, but uh, he had a great lap, and, you know, hopefully we'll go out and do something. Be mid-pack. That'll be good for us. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, man. Al Petty back in the car this weekend. Was 29th in the practice, but was up in the top 15 for a majority of the practice session this morning. Paul Menard on the track. Now, Wally Paul's one of the go-or-go-homers, and now we've had enough of the go-or-go-home guys to qualify. We've had seven of them. It looks like if you can run in the mid-minute 18 second bracket, you might be okay. If you get to the to the top side of that, you may be in trouble. So a 78, five or six. This looks like you might be in pretty good shape. And, and based on his practice run, which was 21st, he was good. So if he can just match it and that's the hard part going out there and knowing that you, you can do it you got the car to do it and not making any kind of mistakes yeah kyle just talked about bobby labani a good lap but he lost a half a second from what he ran in practice made his first cup start in a road course race watkins glenn back in 2003 oh, and that is just not what he needed right no. there that that's exactly what we're talking about that one thing you do now he is kicking himself right now because he had a decent looking yeah. lap up to that point he was fourth fastest in practice among the 17 that need to get in on time i mean that was a good three tenths of a second i bet he lost on that little correction 14th he's on the bubble larry yeah it's gonna be mighty tight but right here this could be the difference right here Qualifying continues here at Sonoma. David Reagan, 18th. That would make him the second slowest car of the 19 cars that have made a qualifying attempt. 52 cars are here, 50 will make a qualifying run. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, parked for the day by NASCAR after failing inspection this morning. And as we've talked about, tomorrow NASCAR will de decide uh, exactly where and when they get to practice on Saturday but they will both be in Sunday's race, starting 41st and 42nd. Bill Elliott, back in the 21 again this week. Comes out on the track, the 20th car. To make a qualifying attempt. You look at how strong Bill has always been on the super speedways, I think we tend to forget that he won his very first career Nextel Cup race on a road course at Riverside, California back in 1983. This will be his 45th road course race. Four of his 44 wins on a road course. Check out the first of his 44 wins on a road course, like Larry was talking about. He got he got through that corner, turn 11, really good to get the green flag. That was one of the best looks I've had of somebody getting through that last corner. And he was mighty good in practice, 11th quick right. cars have already taken the time. Robbie Gordon on the provisional pole. 
Bill Elliott right now looking at a top five. Looking at a top two. If he can get through these S's, yeah, get yeah. down through 10 and 11. If he can get through, ooh, that may have dropped If he can get through 11 this time, like he did the first time, he could make those two spots up, be on the pole. Heading now, 4-11, the hairpin. See how tight he is on those tires? Man, it sure is. Looks pretty solid through there, and the car that stayed pretty nice and straight. Looks like it's maybe going to be somewhere in the minute 1770s or 80s, something like that. Minute 1769 puts him third quickest. Good lap for Bill Elliott. I'll take it from here. NASCAR fans, live free or die hard in theaters Wednesday. What makes NASCAR on speed huge? It's got to be our die hard fans. You live for action every weekend and you know just where to find it. And this summer, die hard fans get the action of an all new die hard movie. NASCAR fans, live free or die hard in theaters on Wednesday. Kevin Harvick. <laughs> He won the last time we were at a road course uh, with the next Elk Cup cars back at Watkins Glen last August. Was third here back in 2003. Started third here a year ago, but finished 24th. Takes the green flag. You know, back to Bill Elliott, it appears that our two past champions <laughs> that are here that would have been eligible for the past championship provisional, it looks like those two guys are going to qualify on time, Bill Elliott and Terry Labonte, possibly. 17. A couple of these guys are, are losing some time there in turn two. For whatever reason, some guys are having a hard time getting through there. The cars are getting sideways on them. That's okay to come over the... Yeah, that, that, that curve there. Actually, your lap would be slower if you if you avoided that curve, if you stayed on the inside of it. So just hit it. <laughs> you need, there's a lot of asphalt out there, and, and you know, it doesn't, uh, doesn't really hurt your momentum at all. Kevin was ninth quickest in practice. Looking to back that up here, possibly in the top 10. Robbie Gordon on the provisional pole. Car looks really good through the S's. Got through 10 good, too. And if you had to turn it to the left, he had to turn it to the left just that little bit. And that hurt him a little bit on the exit of turn 11. Checkered flag for Kevin Harvick. Falls into the eighth spot. Ralph? Well, we're down here with Bill Elliott, who just got done with his qualifying run. And a, and a lot of guys are coming through here with a lot of different impressions of this car and road course trim. What's your thought? Well, I really don't know any better. You know, at this point <laughs> in time, it's just something that's thrown at us. And it, it's not that bad. It's just different. It's just a different feel. You know, and, and I hadn't been here since 03, so I really hadn't had any habits over the last couple of years that I had to break other than just trying to rethink the racetrack as I did here in 03, and, and for us, it's kind of a do or die deal, you know, and man, I'll tell you what, it's it's a lot of pressure on old man, you know. <laughs> do you think that might be an advantage that you don't have any old habits, that you've kind of been away from it a little bit? Well, it didn't hurt at Dover. I mean, we, we ended up in the race, we dropped a valve early on, and we ran on seven cylinders, so we really never got a fair assessment in race trim, but there's still some things I feel like we need to do to the race car, you know, for that particular for an oval, for example, but for here, I don't know till we get on into it and run some tomorrow, because, I mean, basically all we did today was just qualify and trim and just try to get the best layout we could for, for qualifying and go from there. Bill, he's going to have plenty of opportunity on Sunday to develop all kinds of habits. Yes, sir. All right, this should be an exciting lap. Tony Stewart on the track. And yeah, he got through two really good. Oh, man, he got over that hill really good, too. Yeah, he was fourth quickest in practice. You can hear him get against that rev limiter. That's normally a good sign that you got off the corner good. Exactly. You get the RPM up there quickly. 
Tony, a two-time winner here. Five wins and 16 road course races, 10 top 10s in those 16 starts. He is 300th career start on Sunday. Wally, he didn't get in turn seven that great. He lost some ground, but buddy, he got off of it good, and he's looking pretty sporty up through these S's. Carrying that left front tire. He's got five top tens in the last six races. Trying to knock Robbie Gordon off the provisional pole. Well, if he can get through 11 here and not have to turn that wheel to the left like some of them have. We just can't wait to get back in the gas there, Ken. You really can't. Didn't get through there quite as quite as good. He was on the pole up to that point and then lost a couple of spots there, so he's third now. Did hurt him a little bit in turn 11. He was in good shape, but uh, this might be a pretty good start and sp spot. Will, what will be his 300th career start on Sunday? And he's pretty good on these road courses. So. Back there, to take a look. I don't think it was Sarah Malera. This is what Wally was talking about. He seemed to get through this area about as good as we've seen anybody so far up here in turn one and two. And both front tires saw a little air time through those corners. <laughs> left front and the right What front. was the hang time yeah. there? <laughs> and so what's that feel like? Well, you're getting a lot of grip. You're getting a lot of bite. If you can turn the car like that from one angle to the other and it's it's hooking in the left rear so good, it's making that right front light. And actually, it it, it feels pretty good. It's just when it lands, when the car lands, you don't want the, the weight distribution to just throw you all off when you're in the middle of a corner. But that's the place to do it, is coming up over that hill over there. You can get away with it. Where Carl Edwards did it, when, when he carried that left front and had to land and he had to turn to the right right away, that's what hurt him in that right-hander. But it still looked cool. And, it, and that's <laughs> the most important thing. <laughs> you gotta look cool. Gotta have good style, right? <laughs> oh. Here's Casey Mears. Oh, you know what? And there's the, see, there's a lot of guys having a problem there, Larry. I don't know if it's because the right front's locking up. Um, I saw a couple of guys just get really loose there. That was obviously a right front locking up. And see how light that right front is? When you're turning to the right and you're braking, well, if the tire's not on the ground, it's, it's gonna lock up. And it's, you know, it, it, and when it does hit the ground, it's locked. So the car doesn't turn when it's locked. And you know, Wally, we talked earlier in the show why these cars are maybe carrying the front tires more so than what we've seen in the past. We talked about one of them. The, the, the center of gravity is much higher in this car, but the left and right weight distribution is different. These things weigh 1,700 pounds on each side of here, and that can make a huge difference too. All right, but if, if you match this run right here uh, compared to like Robbie's run and look at the front or each Stewart's nose look good. Those guys have done a good job to keep the front of that car flat. And that's what you have to have here your, uh, in Finneon. You've got to be able to, the car's got to be tidy. It's got to have that front down on the ground. Bill, we raised the question in practice earlier is why the 24 and the 48 had problems and the 25 and the 5 didn't. Even though that's one organization, the 24 and 48 are out of one shot. The five and the 25 route another. One of those deals makes me kind of want to go, hmm. NASCAR Nextel Cup qualifying continues on the road course at Sonoma. Robbie Gore in the provisional pole sitter. Then it's Boris said Tony Stewart, Bill Elliott, and Bobby Labonte, the top five. This is the 24th car hey, how to about make that? it run. He pulled a rabbit out of a hat no there. Kidding. Considering how he was in practice, that's probably going to put him in pretty good shape. We talked about it, Bill. That's a minute 18, uh, 45. They're in the mid, mid that, minute 18s. I think that's going to be good. And that officially locks out A.J. Allmendinger and Brian Simo. They will not race here on Sunday. And, and, and Goosen's... The start of that lap wasn't very good. No, not it, at it, all. It, it wasn't, but you know where he really looked good? Uh, Larry was through the S's. Yeah. And I saw the front of his car looked like it was right down on the racetrack getting that grip. Matt Kenseth on the track. We check with Ralph. Well, we're down here with Tony Stewart talking about all the dirt tracks in the area, like Calistoga right up the road. You had a tough time there, you said? Yeah, I about killed myself there in two nights, but uh, it's a fun place. I mean, more, probably one of the most memorable. Oh, Lord. Probably one of the most memorable uh, dirt races of my life was there. Uh, tell her thanks. 
Yeah, Kyle's messing with me. We uh, we had fun with him and his girlfriend on the radio show on Tony Stewart Live on Sirius on Tuesday night. But yeah, that's pretty. They got some pretty neat racetracks out here that I used to run quite a bit with the uh, USAC Western States Midget Series. All right, quickly one one question about the car. You were running very very fast, but it slowed down to seem like in turn 11. Is that the key spot? Uh, it is for me because I always historically have screwed up turn 11, so uh, I'm going to have to get a hold of Ron Fellows or Boris or somebody and see if I can figure out why I'm losing time there. But it uh, seems like we're pretty decent everywhere else, but it, even the, the qualifying lap I didn't think was that good. I mean, it turned out much, much better than what I thought it was going to be. Bill? Thanks, Ralph. Matt Kenseth at a track where he has um, struggled trying to get in a good qualifying lap. It's not looking too good <laughs> right here at all. I no. said trying. And, and look at this, you know, look at this car. Like, look how the front of it flopping. A lot of body roll in the car. Going, can continue to go back to Robbie Gordon. Nothing like the look of that seven car of Robbie's. Matt trying to threaten the top 10 through turn 11. This is not going to be a great run. Matt really had his problems at Michigan last week. In fact, that was the first race that he had not completed every lap of all the races uh, this year. Matt falls into the 14th spot. Here's the other Matt. And I'm alongside Ron Fellows, fresh off the plane from Le Mans, where he ran last weekend. So for about the first time in four years, you don't have to worry about making it in on time. So you can really hang it out and showcase your ability here. <laughs> well, we've got we to keep it on the road. And that seems to be the uh, tough part here this weekend. Um, track is slick, and uh, everybody's you know chasing loose cars, trying to get power down. You know, we'll do the, we'll certainly uh, try to put the best lap we can for the PLP and Pella guys. Uh, it's been fun so far, we'll see what we can do. Fellows in the 96 this week, and remember this is a guy that has won in the truck series and in the bush series on a road course. A win Sunday, Bill, could be the 18th different driver to win in all three of NASCAR's top divisions. Wally, do you see what I see right there about his helmet? It looks like, is he not gonna maybe be hooked up to his radio for this qualifying session? I, I, Probably not, and I never was qualifying. Just find out what you run when you get to the garage, Jerry. It's huh? a, the biggest distraction. I mean, for me, when I was on my lap, was if somebody came in for whatever reason right through my lap, you have that second where you you know you kind of stop and and react, and you don't you don't want to do that. So it's taped up to the helmet. What's that, Matt? He's got the radio cord, Bill. It's taped up to the helmet. Yeah, that's what we actually saw. So he will not be hooked up, evidently. I was on a pretty good lap right here. He wasn't that bad in practice. Some of the guys at the end came out and bumped it back a little bit. But even late in the session, he was in the top 15. And, and Kyle is a good road course driver. I mean, I don't think many people give him credit for it, but he does get around a road course pretty good. 16 races here. He's completed all but two laps. Had the win at Watkins Glen. Has made 50 road course starts. And this will be his 799th Cup start. So that means if all plans go into place at the Brickyard 400, he will make his 800th start. How about that? Pretty fitting place to make an 800th start. But you know, Wally, we, we talk about Kyle a lot. You almost have to believe road racing and then add the car tomorrow into it fits his driving style. He eases the car in the corner, knows you beat people and you run fast from the center off. Yeah, you're right. It, it may come right to him. I, I think he had a little bit of a problem there in turn 11. It didn't seem like he got after the gas the way he wanted to, but he's going to fall into 11th place. Good, Good lap. lap. Outstanding lap for Kyle Petty. And he'll be on the radio with us all afternoon on Sunday. Qualifying continues from Sonoma. 26 cars have made a qualifying attempt here at Sonoma. J.J. Yaley will be number 27. Scored his first bud pole at Michigan in his 57th race. Has finished 33rd in both of his Nextel Cup road course events. Hey, hey, those tires chirping. I mean, we, we've been hearing them in almost every race car. Good audio is what that is. Where's J.J. in practice? 
35th. Okay. 35th. You know, I found out something about this 18 car. We know, obviously, they did not have the race they were looking for in Michigan. He actually had power steering problems during a big oh. portion of that race. Hang on. That cost him four or five spots right there. That doesn't make it fun, does it? No. Just, you could tell right there, Wally didn't hug the inside. The car just washed up the racetrack through turn 11. Checkered flag for J.J. Yaley. 17th. Oh, man, that was so loose to the right there. I don't know what the heck. Let's go back and take a look at part of his run here. You heard him say, really loose to the right. Oh, that's that's cool looking right there, though. <laughs> I mean, but slow. You know what? There it goes back to you got to look at that. And he looked good doing that because that, that was on a four-wheel drift was, right there. It definitely rolled through the first couple corners better. Uh, you know, I was on the chip real hard compared to what I was earlier. We talked about that a while ago that he was against the rev limiter chip, which tells him he was carrying more RPM off the corner. It, it, to me, it looked like he had a really good first half a lap. Then he looked like he struggled a little bit at the top of the S's, and then he started hustling it because he felt like he lost them and left some on a table there. Here's P.J. Jones, 39th in the practice session earlier today. Must get in on his qualifying time. And we're looking for a 78.50 or thereabouts, right? That's what it appears right now. Terry Labonte is fourth quickest of the Gorgo -go homers, and he's at a minute 18.53. David Rudeman scheduled to be back in this car at Loud next week. David elected to run the Milwaukee Bush race because he's actually sitting up there fourth in the Bush Series points right now. PJ looking for the picture perfect lap. Yeah, a little bit loose there on, on the top of two. Getting through this section fairly good right here. On the limiter. He's going to blow this curb. He, he looked like he just overdrove the interest of that corner. You can see he's paying the price down this chute. Qualified 15th last year for this race. Got through that corner pretty good. Now it's just a matter of keeping your momentum through here, keeping it clean. If he can keep that tracker right there inside the top 15, and right now you see he's right there at about ninth or 10th. Oh, and there it's going all out the window, right? Because of that. Paid the price on the exit of turn wow. 10, and I think that's just gonna kill his lap. He may still end up on the top side of a lot of the go-or-go -go homers here, like Ward Burton, Brandon Ash shown down. He may still 18th or better be okay. would be good, and he is 18th. How about that? Minute 1881. They're going to have to stand by on that one for yeah. a while. Let's go back and take a look at some of the highlights of PJ's run here. And see how the, the inside tire is light, and he's going to jump on the brakes right here and it just locks it up it's not even turning yeah and when it's not turning and you're turning the wheel it's going to want to go straight as you can see that car is doing right there so he he lost a lot of time right there because he was on a pretty good lap so he's kicking himself well you know you you really can't kick yourself if you're trying i mean you know especially for for pj he knows he's got to get a lap in. he can't right. he can't sit back but you know you don't kick yourself for for trying too hard but you, you kick yourself for it happening okay and that lap did lock Boris said into the show. Of course, Boris right now is second quickest, but we know he will race on Sunday. And Brian Vickers will not. He's locked out of the starting field. Ricky Rudd. At the most recent of his 23 wins right here. His first win was on a road course back on at Riverside, June of 1983. A two-time winner here. You know, guys, we were talking earlier about this fender situation on the Hendrick cars, and one of the agendas of NASCAR with this car is to have it where you can have a car you can race a lot of places. This is actually the car that Ricky ran at Bristol back in the spring, the very first car tomorrow race. 
as a crew chief. Does that amaze you? It, it, you know, the biggest thing that I've been amazed about the car tomorrow, Bill, is back in January at Daytona testing, Kurt Busch, the two-car Royal Macaulay, unloaded a car, and it's the same car they had tested at Greenville Pickens, a short track, one week prior to that. Unheard of with our That's current right. car. Ricky was 19th in the practice session earlier today. The 29th car to make a qualifying attempt. 52 cars are here, 50 will make a run. Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson parked for the day by NASCAR when their cars failed inspection this morning. This is not gonna be a lap that Ricky's really looking for, I don't think, Wally. Uh, Ricky is he's picking up the inside tire. Every, every time he goes through a corner, you can see that inside tire coming off the ground and it's just not working out for him. Top of 11. He got off 11 pretty good. Picked up a little bit of ground headed up here to the start finish line. Checkered flag for Ricky Rudd. 16th for Ricky. Still ahead, Ron Fellows, Jeff Burton, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Sonoma. Qualifying for the NASCAR Next Elk Cup Series continues on the road course at Sonoma. And Butch Leitzinger jumps into the 18th spot. Boy, and that's big for him. And I think he's on the right side of a lot of the go or go home cars right now. He just locked out Paul Menard. And locked in Bill Elliott. Boy, that's a good job out of him. Here's Jamie McMurray. Let's see, fit in practice this morning. And I heard you talking about him. Yeah, McMurray, I mean, he, to me, he quietly creeps up on you in, in the road course. I mean, he sat on the outside of the front row here a year ago. He's finished second here. He is a really good road racer. 18th here a year ago, 13th before that, second back in 2004, and 20th back in 2003. Coming out of 11, then through 12. takes the green flag to begin his qualifying attempt. Yeah, he sat on the outside of the front row a year ago, and right there went from second to last. Yeah. He spun out in turn <laughs> two. He got through turn two yes, pretty good did. right there. Yeah, that, that car looks real good right now. Front's on the ground. Those yellow lines are just for suggestions, right? Yeah, <laughs> no out of bounds here. <laughs> Not sure why they're even out there, really. <laughs> well, Robbie Gordon's on the provisional pole, but Jamie McMurray may be taking a shot at him here. You know, right now, he is about three, two to three tenths to the good if he can get through turn 10 and turn 11, losing a little bit of ground here at the tail end of the S's. Here's the key right here, turn 11. He's got to get through there better than he did on his get up and go lap. He drove it in and too hard and lost ground on the exit of the corner. Can he get it back? He might get a try. Back. Jamie it's, McMurray. Man, that's going to be close. Making a run at the ball. Wow. He does it. One one hundredth of a second, he beats Robbie Gordon. How about that? And it all happened right there, just as he got Pretty off 11, coming to the start got finish me. line. Yeah. Good grip. Put you on the front right there. <laughs> Larry Carter. Whatever. 52. <laughs> First. Is that Believe not it or not, amazing? Larry's though. Very excited. What's that? And Larry's excited. You just want to know. <laughs> That's <laughs> he, about all you're going to get out of it. He's pretty Larry. much like a dial tone. Yeah. He's the same all the time. Yeah. But it is that not amazing? Two cars, a minute and 17 seconds, one one hundredth of a second separating them right now. That's pretty amazing. Sterling Marlin getting ready to begin his qualifying attempt. I, I do think this is going to be a lot of fun. I, I think it's going to be a great race because you watch how much trouble these guys are having. It, it's hard to be consistent. And, and this is how you pass somebody is by, 
you know, you don't make many mistakes. These guys don't make many mistakes. Everybody runs so good here. You try to wait for an opportunity to pass by somebody making a mistake. These cars, there's going to be guys making a lot more mistakes than the old cars. So you're going to see, I think, a lot more passing because guys are going to really be trying to concentrate, not locking up the, uh, the front tires and brakes or blowing a corner. It, it never fails. It's a 110-lap race. It's actually a fairly short race. Right. And we will get long green runs in the middle. And then all of a sudden, the spotters and the crew chiefs tell them, 10 to go, all hell breaks loose then. <laughs> Right now, it's Jamie McMurray on the provisional pole, then Robbie Gordon, Boris said, Tony Stewart, Bill Elliott, the top five. Sterling is the 32nd car to make a qualifying run. 52 cars are here, 50 will make an attempt. Every time he cuts one direction, it picks the other <laughs> opposite goes. tire up. And, and to me, if you're gonna race a car like that, it's gonna be a long day for you. If you're gonna be racing on one front tire around this racetrack, it's going to be a long day. He's still looking like he's going to be a pretty good lap here if he gets off 11. He's flirting with the top 10. Checkered flag in the air. Sterling Marlin has completed his qualifying run in the 10th position. Good lap for Sterling. Very nicely done. Wasn't pretty, but it was fairly <laughs> effective. E10. Nice job. Snick got the nickname Nigel a few years ago, didn't he, Sterling? You know what? I believe he did. <laughs> wow, I'll never know. <laughs> you know, you have one good lap every now and then, and, you know, it'll get you the airtime and the nickname. So Sterling Marlin in the 10th spot. Here's Casey Kane. What has been a dismal season for this team. And this has pretty much been a dismal racetrack for him. Three starts, finished 31st or worse in all of them. So Casey Kane will be the next car to make a qualifying attempt here on the road course in Sonoma. It's a big day on speed today. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series is about to get underway in Milwaukee. Right now, we have Jamie McMurray on the pole with a number of cars still to run. We'll have an update during the truck show as to what happened here in regard to next talk up qualifying, and you can see what happened tonight at 12.30 Eastern on speed. But for right now, let's get it out to Milwaukee and Chris Devoto for the NASCAR Crossman Truck Series setup show. Our coverage of NASCAR Nextel Cup qualifying from Sonoma continues on speed. Casey Kane on the track. Jamie McMurray on the provisional pole. Casey trying to make his way into the top 10. Qualified second at Watkins Glen last year. His best road course finish, 14th at the Glen in 2004. Looking like a pretty solid lap so far as he's about halfway down through the S's. You can see how the cars have qualified on the ticker at the top of the screen. Now, this will be the first of the three Everhams to qualify, and it was reported in that practice session they went to Virginia International Raceway and tested, and they found something in the front end, the geometry, the suspension of these cars, and it looks like it's paying off, at least for this nine car. Wow, looking at a top five. Yeah, the front, front of his car right down on the racetrack, so he's getting a lot of front grip. It's going to be a very good lap for these guys. Ball's in sixth spot. Good job for Casey Kane. Ralph, what are you up to? Well, I'm standing down here with the guy that's on the top of the speed chart right now, Jamie McMurray. And Jamie, we've been talking a lot about turn 11, but it really, it backs up from there, doesn't it? There's a big dip leading into turn 11. Is that giving you problems? Yeah, the splitters that we have, you know, you used to just grind the valence off. And for me, I can't really drive in any deeper because my splitter is hitting the ground so hard and see what happens if I drive through that. So we uh, had a good lap there. You know, I've been riding my go-kart a lot and I go out to Charlotte on Wednesdays and I just ride lap after lap in my go-kart and it's it's incredible and I got in my car here you just uh, just feel really comfortable. Now a go-kart is a little bit different in weight than a cup car. What do you learn from the go-kart that transfers over to the car? Well you know I've got a couple I've got a shifter and then what they call a tag cart and the shifter you can kind of throw it around and, and uh, it's not a, like a momentum type racing where the the tag cart you have to be really smooth in and um, it's somewhat that's what Sonoma is all about is just not getting out of control and, and trying to keep your car underneath you so uh, I don't know, anytime you can get to something and 
and you know turn left and right and, and just get used to that and um, you know trying to, to run that one lap and make it perfect it's hard I mean I felt like when my lap was over I was like well like you know I got about 80 percent of that but uh, I don't know it feels pretty good right now now, if he hangs on to this pole and then goes on and wins the race on Sunday, my guess is there's going to be a run on sales of go-karts in the Charlotte area. <laughs> and Wednesday nights out at Lowe's Motor Speedway are going to be pretty active between now and Watkins Glen. Good point, Ralph. But I'll tell you something else. If he does start up there, it's going to be interesting watching him get through the first couple of turns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the qualifying down. That's right. Dave Blaney, 20th in the practice earlier today. He needs to pick it up just a little bit. Right now, he's right in the thick of these guys that are back here of the go or go homers where he's at now coming into the S's. Has to get in on his time, as Laurie was talking about. His best roads course start 15th here three years ago. You know, something we probably need to explain. You saw a 23 Caterpillar car qualify a few cars ago. That's actually the 36 car, but but the 360 OTC people were good enough to look at Bill Davis and understand how important it is to have a Caterpillar car in this race. So they elected to let him go ahead and put Caterpillar on both cars and put a 23 on one and a 22 on the other. That's a good lap for Dave Blaney. I and mean, he picked a lot of that up on the last quarter of that lap. You're in the show, man, 1840. That's exactly right. He is locked in. And that will send Brandon Ash really to the house. Good lap. Nice performance. Did an awesome job today, man. I'm proud of you today. Oh, Tommy Ball. Yes. Makes a driver feels good. Makes a driver feel good when you hear the crew chief say that. Yeah. Little little cheerlead never hurts. Now here's Greg Biffle. And you were talking about guys last week that had problems. They had an oil cooler issue last week that they ended up you know, sitting on pit roads for a number of laps that had to fix. And had a great run going yeah. in the early part of that race. Considering especially what they look like in practice on Saturday. That's right. Frustrating year for the Biff, 20th in the standings right now. Was 10th a year ago at this point. 22nd in the practice here today. Had a good run here a year ago. He actually ended up finishing fourth. It's only top 10 in his four races here. So Larry, how close on two stops? 10 laps? Here's what I've been figuring. I had my calculator out oh, again, Lord. by the way, oh is this is a 110 lap race. Wow. In the past with 22 gallons of fuel, you could run about 36 to 37 laps. So you could easily do it on two stops, which is what you want to do. Now we have the 19 gallon sale, and what you can figure on, on laps to the gallon here is about a lap and a half to the gallon. So now you can run about 33 laps. You do the math, they're gonna be somewhere between eight and 10 laps shy of doing it on two stops. And I think that's gonna make this race very interesting on Sunday. Certainly will. Biffle's using all the track. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah Greg's doing a good job. I mean, you can see he's hustling the car, but he's, He's not out of control, you know what I mean? He's, he's not losing time by doing it. Through turn 11. It's back in the gas hard. Trying to crack that top 10. It's gonna be a good lap for him. 10, Will. Yeah. And we've got a lot of Fords up there. We actually have six Fords in the top 10 right now. Booting the top three. Good job for the Biff, Matt. And Denny Hamlin talking things over with his team, the Mexico City Bush winner. So if you had one place on this racetrack that's an issue for Denny Hamlin, where would it be? Uh, uh, anything that goes right, probably. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. It's uh, We were okay. We were really good in race trim, I felt like, but uh, qualifying, we just were really um, sliding around a lot. And I think uh, a little bit of it was car, a little bit of me. So. Uh, I think we're, we're going to hopefully have our issues uh, all straightened out. Uh, hopefully we'll get somewhere in that top ten. So how difficult is this race car to master here at this place? Um, this is a lot more technical racetrack than, than other road courses you go to, where Watkins Glen or, or Mexico. Those are a lot higher speed, so we're used to that. This slower speed turning left and right is way more technical, and, and it's really easy to overdrive. Place he finished 12th one year ago, Bill. 
Thanks, Matt. In a backup car yes. after crashing in practice right before qualifying. That's right. Here's Clint Boyer. Finished 16th here a year ago. It was 16th in practice earlier today. Becomes the 36th driver to make a qualifying attempt. Didn't get through there as well as I think he intended. We're over the hill real good. That's a great camera shot, but a yes. scary looking one. <laughs> Looks like it could end up being a pretty solid run for Clint Boyer in this 07. Four of his seven top tens this year been in the car of tomorrow race. 16th last week at Michigan. Boy, heavy, heavy on the brake and getting down into turn 10. Didn't seem to hurt him a whole lot, though. No, because he could still, he was still able to turn the car. He was still under control. Yeah, so he, he didn't, lose a, didn't lose a lot of time there. This lap's getting better as it goes here. Knocking on the door for the top five. Lost a little bit off of 11. Seven. Good lap. 07 is seven for now. Jamie McMurray on the provisional pole. Still a lot of cars to run at Sonoma, including Ryan Newman and Juan Pablo Montoya. NASCAR oh. next all cup qualifying continues on speed. And it's not always pretty. Joe Nemechek. And what he did is like when you miss a gear in a big tractor and trailer, you just got to stop and start over. You're not going to make that up, though. No, not at all. Maybe we'll pull down pit lane. Yeah, I'm still going. Good. 32nd in practice earlier today. Best finish here, 11. Back in 2000. You know, there's just so many things that goes along with qualifying well here. As we mentioned a while ago, it's a fairly short race. And when you start up front, you don't have to overwork your equipment when they drop the green flag. Plus, it gives you a pretty decent pit selection when you qualify up front. That's right. And it, and the way these cars look, <laughs> well, the way Joe looks, <laughs> uh, you know, you want to you wanna try to be up front as much as possible because you know... A lot of things happen in the first couple laps here after they throw the green flag. What are you saying? I'm saying that <laughs> Joe may be one of them, the way that car looks. And then that's what's going to be interesting Sunday is watching this 24 and this 48 car come from the back of the field. Long way around for Joe Nemechek, 36th of the 37 cars. Turn two, got a little bit sideways. To me, it didn't look like that weight distribution we talked about wasn't set enough for the car to take that right. next turn, yeah. you know? He was coming up the hill, the car was all jacked, and he needed to get back the other way, and it just didn't flatten out for him to be able to turn that car. And that's why I think the guys that have the front ends down oh, on the bad. racetrack don't have to wait as long to make that transition left to right. As you see on his lap, that car was picking the front up off the ground under acceleration. And there's so many things these guys can do to help that. You know, you heard Jamie McMurray talk about rubbing the splitter, so you can only go so soft with the front springs. The shock package in the front roll bar, the front sway bar can play a big role and in it. Shocks are 90% are of it. And Joe's a good road course racer. Yeah, no, Joe gets around road course excellent. So does this guy. Ron Fellows. Did you see what he was doing now? He's getting heat in his tires, but he's not going to get on the gas until he has to save those tires just a little bit. Tremendous road course resume for Ron Fellows. As long as you can get through here. Because I think that's important, getting through turn 11, coming for the green. Has 14 career Nextel Cup Series starts. Sunday will be his 15th. And I think all of them are at road courses except one start at Loudon, New Hampshire at one point. The second at Watkins Glen back in 2004. Terry Labonte drove this car to a third place finish last year here in Sonoma. 
But you know, our guys talked to Ron a while ago, and, and he's in a position that he has not been in in a long time. Normally, they bring him here, a team will bring him here to try to get the car qualified. This car's locked into the show. But you know he really wants that good starting spot. A cup win to him would mean so much. Oh, absolutely, because he's won in the truck series, he's won in the bush series, just like you said. Carl has a nice look yeah, about it, it, Wally. Looks good. I think he's going to have a, a good race car on Sunday. Sixth in practice earlier today. Here's your turn, Wally. Looks pretty good. Yeah. You know we're all going to be watching that in Wally's world, don't you? So you get through that. I'll show you how not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a great run for Ron. No, he's going to end up eighth quickest in this 96 car. He's going to be excited, isn't he? Eighth for Fellows, locked into the field. Still trying to get that first Nextel Cup Series win. Sorry about that. Trans Am champion, 24 hours of Daytona. American Le Mans Series. Yeah, he ran in the 24-hour Le Mans last uh, week, finished sixth overall. A three-time co-winner of that. Dale Jarrett. Yeah, it was 34th fastest in practice, so he's right. I think those guys need to pick it up a little bit. Has to get in on his qualifying time. Coming around to take the green flag. Has never won in 41 road course races. Best of fourth a couple of times. Right now, he needs to run faster than a minute 18.45 if he wants to lock himself into this show. He ran a 78.70 was his best in practice, so he's got to pick it up. And after Dale qualifies, we'll have three Gore Go Homers left to go. Kenny Wallace, Scott Riggs, and Claus Graf will be the other three left to go. Needs about the 14th position, right, Larry? Yeah, he's he's getting in the right position here as he goes down the chute into turn seven. What he did there, you saw the tracker go to the right, getting in the corner, but look how much he gained off the corner, which is, is how he run a road course. I mean, Wally certainly will attest to that. But in race conditions, there's going to be somebody next to him if you do that during the race, because there's going to be guys running in deeper. So, I mean, to, to get a good fast lap, yeah, but if you're in race conditions, boy, if you leave that, if you leave that open over there because you went in the corner, uh, not very deep. Somebody's going to be there next to you. Boy, he's in good shape if he can get through oh, 11. A lot of slide there in turn 11. He's going to be in good shape, though, I think. This should end up locking him in the show, this lap right here. Good lap. Wow, nicely done for Dale Jarrett. Pops into the 12th spot and locks himself in. 18, 17, baby. Awesome lap. Awesome lap. Sends Ward Burton home. Boy, good job for Dale Jarrett. Unfortunately, yeah, that last his, corner a little hot, but it rolled around and turned. His teammate PJ Jones right, in the four, double man. zero he can't car. Anything more than that right there, dog. You the man. A little bit more of that cheerleading we've yeah. been talking about there from Jason Burdett, but unfortunately that lap put PJ Jones in the double zero car on that bubble That's mark right. right now. With three more go or go homers left to make their attempt. Jeff Green, 17th in practice today. His best finish here, fifth back in 2002. And has always had to come from deep in the field. And you know, all year long, this Haas CNC group, of course, Hendrick cars, Hendrick engines, Hendrick technology, they have been really good with these car tomorrows. You lose a little bit there? Yeah, he, he, I'm not sure what happened there, but he had to catch the car. 
two sixth place finishes so far this year for Jeff, both in a car tomorrow race. Nine road course races, his best finish was that fifth place we talked about here at Infineon. You have to make some ground up. It's not looking real good right now. Still 10 drivers to go after Jeff Green. Jamie McMurray on the provisional pole. This is another one of those teams that really need to get their act together because they're another group that's in that danger zone sitting there 32nd in owner points right now. Pressure there just keeps building, doesn't it? We, we talked to A.J. Allmendinger on our trackside show, and he says, unless you've experienced it, there's no way you can explain how gut-wrenching it is to go to track and know that you've got to qualify on time. He said it starts much earlier in the week than Friday. <laughs> yeah, like Monday night. <laughs> Jeff Green, 27th. Right in front of J.J. Yaley. Fifty two cars are here again. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson will not be making a qualifying attempt. Did not practice today. Their car is parked by NASCAR after failing inspection this morning. You know, Wally, when we interviewed Boris said earlier, who was one of the first cars to go out as we're sitting here with about 10 cars left to go. I'm just not sure that other than the fact he talked about that Winston West rubber being on the racetrack, I'm not sure weather-wise there's an advantage or disadvantage going out early or late. Certainly you'd like to go late, but uh, just don't know the weather's changing that much. I don't think it I don't think it has. I mean, maybe uh, Matt can give us an idea out there, but I don't think the track temperature has probably changed any since we've started qualifying. Jeff Burton. 26 road course races, his best finish, a second at Watkins Glen. Seventh here a year ago, 11th at the Glen in 2006. He's been on a little bit of a qualifying roll here of late. The last three races, Dover, Pocono, and Michigan, all top 10 starts for this 31 group. Oh, man, he locked that right front up forever. <laughs> I think the tracker towed the tail. He went all the way to second getting in that corner yeah. right there. 14th in the practice session today. A little air time there. A little air time, but Tracker looks good. I mean, right now he's hanging there right around the top 10. This is one of those top 10s yearn. And I know one thing they fought in practice earlier was their car was pretty fast. He was up in the top five. They fought brake problems. Wally, he said he'd push the pedal, but the car just would not slow down. They worked on that almost the entire practice. Hey, what? This is going to be good. He got through 11. Very good right there. Threatening the pole. Like he's going to be maybe there in the 50s, low 60s with this 31 car. Fifth. Minute 17.65. He'll like Good that, lead. yeah. So he falls in behind Tony Stewart in front yeah, of Bill kinda, Elliott. Yeah, he kind of didn't hit it just right. I, uh, car was a little better than I was. I just didn't, uh, didn't exactly hit it, but it wasn't bad. I just got a little bit free in some areas, and, uh, but it was more enticed by me than it was the car. There's only one start better than 12th here. That was third back in 2002. Right now, fifth. Here's Junior. 30th in practice earlier today. Finished fifth at Michigan last week. 12th in points now. And you know what's interesting about that 12th in points, as far as getting into the chase, they have now overcome that 100-point penalty that they received at Darlington. Yeah. And I think that right there set the precedence as far as this car tomorrow, looking across to the first of next week with Chad Knauss and Steve Latar. Points and personnel are going to be the big question early next week when NASCAR makes its decision. The 24 and the 48 did not get through inspection this morning. They have not practiced today, will not qualify. NASCAR will announce tomorrow 
what track activities they're allowed to take part in on Saturday. Junior has never finished in the top 10 here. 11th twice. The car looks good, Larry. I mean, so far it looks like it's very balanced. It's a clean lap. Looking better and better as he starts up through the S's right now. Lindsey Zarniak talked about this car in practice. They took this car to Virginia International Raceway and tested. He was real happy with it. And he said he told Tony Gibson, Tony Uri Jr., please don't change anything about this race car before we go to Infineon. That left-hander and that right-hander, that section he just went through, he went through as good as anyone. I mean, the car looked right on the ground. And he got through 11 good, too. So it's going to be a very good lap for Dale Jr. Flirting with the top five. Flirting with the top three. Third. Wow, very impressive. Junior's best starting spot here in the past 10th. <laughs> I think the crowd speaks for itself. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Third quick. Third quick. I had a 1745. Hell yeah. Man, awesome. <laughs> All right. Good job, good job. Real proud of y'all. Good, good, good job, man. Good job. He's only two one hundredths off the pole. Right now, 77.54, minute 17.54. <laughs> that fans don't like him much out here, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> he is popular everywhere. <laughs> okay, Klaus Groff has to get in on his time. 38th here a few years ago on the starting grid. Finished 17th that year. That's his only NASCAR start. His team has only made four races so far this season. Now he actually drove for this team here a few years ago and, and made the race here at Infineon. P.J. Jones will be watching this lap very closely because right now P.J. and that double zero on that bubble. Don't think P.J. is going to have anything to worry about so far. I mean, this car does not look like it's handling very well. And was the slowest in practice earlier today. 50th. Keep an eye on this car and check in with Matt. And Bill, the last guy to qualify today will be Juan Pablo Montoya. Now, you were here when you were 15 years old doing the Skip Barber series, and you've got a little map of the race course on your steering wheel. So how has your day gone here at Infineon? It's been pretty tough, actually. We came in, and the car was a little bit off, so we had to do a lot of work. And at the end, we got it a little better. I think for, for race team, and that would be pretty good. I don't know. We just have no idea what we're going to run, you know. We've done a couple of changes to try to improve where we run from practice, but... We'll see, you know, we just got to be up there so we give ourselves a chance for the race. Thank you, Juan. And it just keeps getting uglier. <laughs> <laughs> it's not getting any better, that's for sure. So I think this car will be making the trip back across the country here later on this evening. They will not make this show. Man, that's a long haul. That is a long haul. Might want to leave that off somewhere along the interstate. That <laughs> car. That thing, that just looked like he had a handful. He was driving it. I mean, you could see he was driving the heck out of it, but... He was to no avail. To no avail. He was struggling. Third down. Ralph. Well, we're down here with Dale Jr. in 77, 546. Good enough for third. More impressive, only just a couple of hundreds off of the pole time. Now, you got a fast car. Is it going to be good enough for the race? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I, you know, the car is great. The driver's got to be good enough for the race. But, uh, you know, there's so many places here to make mistakes, and I've, I, I think I've hopefully made them all. Um, I just got to be smooth. That qualifying lap was was nothing about aggressiveness, nothing about pushing it, just just being smooth, getting in and out of each corner. And, uh, you know, the lap's a, a little bit of a surprise for us, but uh, the lap is just all about being smooth, and that's what you got to do in the race, and I just got to be able to put it together. Yeah, that sounds like such a simple thing to be smooth, but how hard is it to do that? Well, it's just discipline to, to, to hold the reins on yourself. You want to go after it and charge, and, Drive deep in the corners. Try to try to use less brake than you did the lap before. Things like that, and that just gets you in trouble time after time. At least me, anyways, and your car up. So um, I just got to be able to remember that every lap, you know, and it's really hard. It's it's not easy, but it's you know, qualifying is one thing, race is another. 
Bill, as he walked up here, I said, nice lap. And I said, where'd you make all your time? He goes, man, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. And, and in theory, what he's saying is right. The problem is you got somebody in front of you you're chasing. And all that goes out the window. Yep. Um, but, you know, he's right. You want to be smooth and you want to take care of your car. And, and if you can be disciplined and do that through the race, you're going to have a lot of race car at the end of the race. But it, when you're a race car driver, that's not how you think. You think about getting in front of the guy that you're running down. As I said earlier, especially when they tell you 10 to go. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny Wallace was 41st in the practice this morning and has to get in on his qualifying time. We do need to mention when Claus Graf qualified, that locked Mark Goosens and also Terry Labonte is locked in the show on time, so the championship provisional will not be used here this weekend. It doesn't look like that car will be used here this weekend either. It's not looking good for the Herminator right now. Checkered flag for Kenny Wallace. 39th. That will send them home. Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now in third. That would be his best road course start, tying a third at Watkins Glen. NASCAR next, Del Cup qualifying on speed. Need some directions? Juan Pablo Montoya with a map of the track. And, and the reason he has that the way it is is so when he's talking to the crew chief and, and they're talking about corners, they're talking about the same corner. And I think that's probably very different than what we're using today. <laughs> well, no, actually, it isn't. He's got 11 down there at the end. But but that's what the map's for. It's not because he doesn't know where he's going. It's because he's talking with his crew chief and they're on the same page. But it goes from four to seven. There's a lot of A's in there. Too. There is. Yeah, that, <laughs> I, I, I never a, did like B. the three A and three B yeah. stuff at all. No, very confusing. Oh, Denny Hamlin making his qualifying attempt here. And the reason we go from four to seven is they reconfigured this racetrack, I think it was 2002, 2003, did away with a big part of the course that kind of goes up in the middle portion of it. <laughs> Good job, Larry. So, I was losing ground there on that lap. <laughs> yeah, you started losing ground. I was wondering where you are going to go with that, but yeah. Don't, you can never explain how road courses are numbered. You just can't explain it because it's different for everybody. Denny Hamlin's not on a very good uh, lap no. here. 27th in practice earlier today. This is not a very good lap at all for Denny. For the second to Juan Pablo in Mexico City. Past winner down there on the road course. Finished 10th at Watkins Glen in his first cup road course event. Well, he started about 40th a year ago, and he's going to be back there somewhat in that same area right now, 34th after that qualifying run. But finished 12th. This is ago. true with that backup That's car. right. Handful of drivers still to go. Juan Pablo will be last. Ryan Newman has yet to make his run. Hamlin heads back to the garage. It's Jamie McMurray, Robbie Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Boris Said, and Tony Stewart in the top five. Oh, it Sadler ran good in practice. It was uh, 12th fastest. It's actually been a pretty good racetrack for him. You look at his last five races here, he's had four top 10 finish, just good and solid. Be career start number 301 for Elliott on Sunday. That's just one top 10 finish this season. That was back at Daytona, finish sixth. You know, who would ever believe that we're 15 races through this season, and if you take all three Everham cars, only three top 10s total. I'll tell you one guy that wouldn't believe it. Ray Everham. That's exactly right. And you, you know, Larry and Wally, you keep waiting for those three to make the turn, to make a statement, to, to deliver. And I, I definitely think that has been one of the biggest disappointing surprises, I think, of 2007, especially their mile-and-a-half, two-mile yes. program. I think Casey had three wins by this time last year. Sitting well up in the points. Four wins by this point last year. 
Yeah, because he won uh, at Michigan. Boy, Elliott was a busy guy getting down yeah. into turn seven right there. I mean, the, the lap doesn't look that bad. I mean, the car looks fairly decent. It was almost like he didn't have a speed from the start because he got through turn one and two. It looked like pretty good, but he was already 15th, 16th. He may wind up right there around the top 10 if he gets through 11. Never started better than 16th here. Looks like he may end up right there about where his teammate Casey Kane's at. Right now, Casey is eighth quickest, and that's about where Elliott's going to end up, it looks like. 11th. Lost, lost a little bit of ground off of turn 11, late exit. He should be pretty happy with that lap, though, I think. Oh. Yeah, 100% my fault. I just took you too careful. Sorry about that, guys. There's that fine Good line lap, Good lap. Good lap. between underdriving yep. and overdriving. Falls in behind Ron Fellows and in front of Bobby Labonte. Here's his teammate, Scott Riggs. Now, this is going to be interesting. This is the last go or go home guy. Of course, Scott Riggs missed the race a few weeks ago, I think, at Darlington. Right. If he does not beat P.J. Jones, for the first time since Daytona, Michael Waltrip Racing will have all three cars in this race. Riggs has to get in on his time. He was 28th quickest in practice earlier. PJ right now, 32nd. So Scott needs to run faster than a minute 1881. 813, in fact. Fast lap in practice in 1859. And right now, if you look at the tracker, he's right in that area of a minute 1870, 80s. Not right here, he's not. PJ was 32nd. And that's exactly where you see the 10 car right, right now, right there between 28th and 34th. Has to try and make up some time. Scott has to get in on his qualifying time on this lap. This is going to be close. Yeah, real, it is. <laughs> it's going to come down to turn 11, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's going to come down to what it has been all year long, thousands and hundreds exactly of a right. second. All right. Look it in there deep. Yeah, if he can swing it through, it's going to be awfully close. Just don't believe he's going to get there, Wally. It's going to be close, but I don't think it's going to beat P.J. Jones. No, it will not. 35th quickest. He is a tenth slower than P.J. Jones. Scott Riggs will not race here on Sunday, but P.J. Jones will. A couple of more cars to go. Jamie McMurray on the provisional pole at Sonoma. NASCAR Nextel Cup qualifying continues at Sonoma. David Gilliland on the track to make his qualifying attempt. If you notice a little repair work on the right rear quarter panel. Just about five minutes from practice being over a while ago, uh, he got into the tire wall up there at the top of the hill, pretty much in that turn one, turn two area, Wally. Todd Parrott and that group. Uh, which I pretty much anticipated they elected to repair that car. You can see that right front tire locking up, getting into turn four. Didn't bend anything? I think it was just sheet metal. And, you know, once again, the, the big talk, ever since we saw the wing on the car tomorrow, is how durable that wing would be. And he took a pretty hard lick on that right rear, but that wing never moved on that race car. Made his first cup start here one year ago. Started 31st, finished 32nd. Was 37th in the practice earlier today. He's going to be actually trying to get a little more seat time around this road course by racing in the uh, Grand National Division West Series race they'll have here tomorrow afternoon. Seat time never hurts. 36th for David Gilliland.
It's McMurray, Robbie Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Boris said Tony Stewart, the top five. Ryan Newman. I tell you what, I guarantee you, Jamie McMurray will be watching this run pretty close. Ryan was eighth quickest in practice and uh, always pretty, pretty sporty on these road courses. Has four poles in 2007. His best road course start was third at Watkins Glen last August. And he finished second in this race one year ago. Yeah, seven top ten finishes in his ten road course races. Not bad. Yeah, he's been known to put a qualifier lap down. <laughs> yeah, no matter where we're at. Yeah. Green flag for Ryan Newman. Well, he's so far uh, just doesn't look like he has the speed. It may come to him, but he's got a lot of ground to make up. Yeah, that's why I was talking earlier about getting to the green flag. You'll see when they get to the top of two, you know, he was he was way back. He was way down in uh, 26, 27, 28. So I think if you start off down there, like you say, it's real hard to make that up. <clears throat> when trying to stay in the top 20. He's making some of it up. Yeah. Keeps inching toward the top 10. Right now, about 12th, 11th or 12th. One more car to go after Newman, Juan Pablo Montoya. What he's trying to do, which like while he's been talking, it can be a challenge. He needs to pick up about two tenths from what he ran in practice. Just not sure it's gonna get there. He is last corner here coming off turn 11. Not a pole, but a nice recovery. Yeah, no kidding. He made up a lot of ground in the second half of that lap. Ryan Newman to ninth. So it worked out okay. Was eighth in practice. Ninth right now. One car to go. Juan Pablo Montoya. Jamie McMurray. The provisional pole sitter. There's Juan. Won the Bush race at Mexico City with a little excitement at the end. <laughs> yeah, the kind I don't think his teammate wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> Juan was 13th quickest in practice. He ran a minute 17.95. Right now, McMurray is a minute 17.52. Qualified third in Mexico City. Last car to make a qualifying attempt. Coming to get the green flag with Jamie McMurray waiting and watching. He was against the limiter hard at the start finish line, headed up the hill. Tells me he probably stayed maybe in third gear, did not go to high right. gear in that area. Right. He should have shifted, I think. Yeah, I think, <laughs> it, I think it hurt his speed. It really did. Yeah, I mean, the speed is not there at all, like we've seen with a lot of race cars. Roush Racing has only one pole. Here in Sonoma back in 1997 when Mark Martin won the pole and the race. McMurray trying to wait out one more car to put Roush back on the pole here at Anthony. Montoya not going to be a threat for the pole. Jeremy McMurray has two bud poles at Homestead in 2003 and Pocono in 2005. This is not going to be anything like Juan Pablo Montoya, Donnie Wingo was looking for in this qualifying run. And puts him in a deep hole for the start of the race. Checkered flag out for the final car. Juan Pablo Montoya, 32nd. And qualifying is over at Sonoma. And Jamie McMurray has won the pole.
He's the 11th driver to win a bud pole at Infineon. Front row of Jamie McMurray and Robbie Gordon. First pole this season for McMurray. <laughs> I'm going to sit up and turn one on that turn one. one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm pretty impressed, though. Dale Earnhardt Jr. sitting there in third right behind these guys. And how about the fact that Gordon and Johnson have to start at the back? Well, you know, 18 races here. No one has won from a starting position back further than 13th, yeah. so that will be interesting to watch. And no practice so far either. That's right, track. so far. And maybe not a lot of practice tomorrow, but we'll find that out here in Sonoma on Saturday morning. So Jamie McMurray on the pole he has four top fives and five top tens in the six car of tomorrow races so far qualified second at martinsville and phoenix pretty impressed also with a man up there in seventh we interviewed him earlier he hadn't been here in three or four years bill elliott qualifying that 21 car well up in the top 10. only the second ford pole in 2007 david gilliland got the other one at daytona Fords in three of the top four positions. And again, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson not allowed to practice or qualify today after failing inspection this morning. Here's the starting grid for the Toyota Save Mart 350 that you'll see on TNT Sunday afternoon. McMurray and Gordon, Earnhardt Jr. with a good run. Boris Set is up there. Tony Stewart's got a couple of wins here. Great run for Bill Elliott in qualifying. Casey Kane has a top 10 spot. Ryan Newman, Clint Boyer. See Ron Fellows there on row six, along with Elliot Sadler. Dale Jarrett got in on his time. The hottest man on the circuit the last three weeks, Martin Trex Jr. there. There's Kyle, back in 45th. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> row I'm not going to tell him you said that. <laughs> nah, Kyle, it's going to be fun. That's going to be fun to watch. Yes, it will be. Joe Nemechek had trouble on his lap, took the long way around. He's back in row 20. And again, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson will have to start at the back of the field, not allowed to practice or qualify today. The pole sitter is Jamie McMurray, and there's Matt Yoakum. Third time he'll start on the pole, and you weren't even watching the rest of qualifying. That's torture to uh, to sit there and watch, especially with Ryan and, and Juan going at the end. I knew those guys would be fast, and I knew that I didn't get it all on my lap. So I was watching the truck race, just uh, trying not to think about it. And we were joking around about Larry Carter, your crew chief. It, it's almost like he was almost asleep. He was so chilling up there. He uh, he doesn't get very excited. He doesn't get down. And he doesn't get up. He's pretty much uh, always at the the same speed. But uh, you know, I've watched the guys. I watched you know Speed will go in and they'll they'll watch the guy in the trailer. And I'm like, I'm never going to do that again because that's just torture. <laughs> but when you get put in that position, and, and we've been really close to a pole this year, we qualified in the top five at, at most of the car tomorrow races. And I thought I'm not going to do that again. But once you get put in that position, you want to be the best on that day and 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 to qualify on the pole. So. I'm pretty excited. Definitely a car to watch on Sunday. His best finish here at Infineon is second. Bill. Thanks, Matt. Here are the drivers going home after the long trip to Sonoma. A lot of our regular boys there. And look at Scott Riggs. That's the second DNQ that he's had here in 2007. So Jamie McMurray, Robbie Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Boris said, Tony Stewart, the top five. And again, the big story from Sonoma today, Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson not allowed to practice or qualify after failing inspection this morning here in Sonoma. A lot of excitement here today. Carl Edwards with a strong run. Robbie Gordon threatened to take the pole. Ron Fellows looking for his first NASCAR win. And Kyle Petty in the show, back in the car. We'll see all the action from Sonoma on Sunday on TNT. And don't forget, practice coverage Saturday right here on Speed. Thanks for having us in for qualifying. Jamie McMurray wins the pole in California.